some of you maybe know me, I'm Alex, uh, since 2011 already working with, uh, with GTEC. Um, yeah, and today we will do this clo uh, closed loop experiments. Um, you probably saw the first slide already uh, today, earlier with Christoph's presentation, for example, of uh, brain computer interface. So um, yeah, we saw also today already a couple of applications. Um, today, um, yeah, um, in this presentation, I want to focus here a bit more on the feedback side uh, with different opportunities, once with the muscle stimulation with the, uh, via the, the functional electrical stimulation and also on the other side with the uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation via TMS. So, um, we will measure brain activity from Slobodan, um, and I will show you two different ways of then generating the control signals that we see here to control our devices uh, that will give us the feedback to close the loop for our subject. So yeah, for the functional electrical stimulation, we need uh, a device that we are producing, it's called GE STEMFES. Uh, actually, in this experiment, we will use two of those, um, one for the right hand, one for the left hand side. Um, you can see uh, with the pads here, you can stimulate the muscles. Um, some more details shortly here. Um, typically, uh, the uh, stimulator can uh, use, be used for one nerve for one muscle. We can also do a vagus nerve simulation um, in our Simulink uh, environment. We have a lot of uh, stimulation parameters that we can uh, modify actually using this device and um, different range of the stimulation available here. Um, as mentioned, you can fully program it. Um, but you can also run it actually as a standalone device. So there is also a software coming provided with the uh, GE Steam FES that you install on a Windows computer, for example, and you don't need any MATLAB or Simulink uh, to control it actually. But for closed loop experiments, of course, we need uh, more analysis steps here before. Um, yeah, it's a biphasic stimulator and it's also a medically certified device. Um, because we also use it for our other applications um, for rehabilitation, for example. So um, we can change, for example, our stimulation phase amplitude. Um, can go from one milliampere up to 60 milliampere. Um, you also can uh, change the phase duration. Um, so the intensity here for the stimulation. Um, only shortly here, to mention, um, you can actually define completely the um, stimulation shape here um, and the intensity, as I said, the duration, as I said, so uh, everything can can be really um, defined with the um, with the Simulink uh, functionality. Yeah, we call it here a train of several pulses, for example, when you do multiple stimulations, there's also uh, the interval in between the stimulations, um, everything to be defined. Um, I will uh, explain that the features here uh, a little bit afterwards because um, the, the, the experiment also takes a while and there is a, a part in between where Slobby is doing the the motor imagery actually um, to imagine a movement. So that's why I will skip this part for the moment and directly go to the um, to the uh, experiment and I will explain you the functions a little bit more in detail while Slobby is doing the, the session. So I will just um, use the other screen to share. So here we have um, MATLAB and um, there is a model that I defined already here for the functional uh, electrical stimulation. 
So actually you can see we have uh, here a block to get the data from our amplifier can be uh, yeah all the different devices from our side. Um, I think this model, uh, a, a similar one you already saw uh, during the day, um, we calculate uh, common spatial patterns, uh, do a vari uh, variance calculation here, normalization, and uh, here to apply our classifier. Then we run here our PCI paradigm, which is in principle asking our subject to imagine a movement of the left or right hand. I can open here and then we can see the paradigm we can select to get no feedback, to get a feedback uh, or a ball feedback. Uh, for the training, we usually do without feedback. And you can reply, uh, I have several runs here. And important for the experiment is the lower part here to actually do the simulation with the, the FES. Um, for that reason, I will now mount the cap and also the electrodes for the stimulation. But first of all, I want to stop the screen share and switch the camera so that you see a little bit more. Okay, so let's start with the EG cap. This is a cap with 16 active electrodes, actually. They are placed over the motor area, motor cortex. So we measure nasion and inion position and to check CZ position. I start to inject gel in all the electrodes. So as mentioned, we have 16 here on the motor area. And we will use the G high amp for the recording. It's always Frankie this morning. We use here also active electrodes, so it's quite easy to prepare them in general. We only have to inject a little bit of gel in each single electrode. Not too much, because we want to avoid bridging, but in this case, the electrodes are not so close close to each other, so it's quite hard to achieve that. And the last one here is our reference, but also a little bit here. The earlobe. Beside that, we also do the placement of the FES electrodes. Um, so for that purpose, we ask our subject to do uh, a wrist Dorsiflexion movement so that we can feel a bit where we place the electrodes here. So we have the two ones here for this side. Then I move to the other side. Oops. Sorry, same procedure. So, electrodes are placed and now I share my screen again. 
So we have our model here. First of all, I select the amplifier. We have our G high ampere. And in the configuration, we can select here our sampling rate, for example. Um, we choose for this experiment 256 Hertz. We activate the first 16 channels because that's the setting over the motor area that we are using. And we have the, uh, the reference electrode actually on channel 18. You can see that here through the bipolar calculation. Uh, additionally, we activate uh, filters um, from 0 0.5 to 30 Hertz and a notch filter for 50 Hertz. Um, of course, you can also record here without the filters and do the, uh, the filtering for the visualization, for example, only if you want to have the raw data for your analysis. So that's up to you how you decide it here. Um, what we have to do then is to check for the uh, stimulation of the right and left hand. So I will start with the right hand. Therefore, I double click the stimulator here. Um, whenever you double click it, um, the stimulator is doing a self test. So um, if everything works fine, um, and if so, the control panel is actually available here. Um, as you can see, we can uh, change here main settings like the, uh, the phase duration and the phase amplitude. So uh, typically for this movement, we use a uh, phase duration 300 uh, uh, milliseconds um, and a phase amplitude. The, um, this is what we have to uh, modify now to see how much current we need for doing a proper um, movement. So some people need here more. Depends if a patient, for example, very often when they have uh, had a stroke, for example, they need quite high intensity here. Um, healthy people usually don't need so high um, stimulation uh, currents here. Uh, other settings are on the second uh, panel, so you can um, activate different uh, Pulse lengths, uh, fade in duration, fade out duration info, uh, um, values here. So different settings are possible here. And we can also see uh, battery level status. So the device is uh, battery driven. Um, I will show that to you during the, the experiment also shortly. And uh, yeah, device name is defined here. So what we can do now is to activate the device. It's not stimulating yet, so in this it's only active now, and now we can start with the stimulation and increase shortly, um, step by step, the phase amplitude to generate the movement. Okay, this lobby is relaxed. We start with the stimulation. So he is feeling it now. You can see the arm is slightly. Yeah, maybe the position is not 100% optimal. That could also be, of course. Let's try it again. Okay. Okay, so we we get the movement. Um, of course, it, uh, with a bit more time, we could uh, check here more in detail about the uh, really proper movement. But uh, I think that's fine for the moment. So 
we do the same for the second side. So left hand, stimulator is doing a self-test again. Um, you don't hear it now, uh, but there is also like a, a buzz of feedback uh, from the device. So when it's always when it's stimulating, for example, or doing the self-test, we hear that. So let's increase correctly a bit. You feel it? Here we actually directly got the right position. So you can see it in the on the left hand side. Just the, the movement actually that's uh, what we uh, want to have. And I stop now here again and close. Um, yeah, so Slobby's task will uh, be to do an imagination of the left or right hand movement. Um, he always do is, is doing this imagination for around four seconds uh, where we are measuring the brain activity and we are doing this task like 40 times now. I will start the model uh, now for uh, shortly, but uh, only to show you the brain signals and um, the, the task window. And then afterwards I will restart it and slowly will do the, the the experiment actually. So when the model is starting again, the stimulators are doing the self-check as a security. Okay, and now you see we have it is ESTEM uh, FES master. If I really want to get the stimulation, then we need to click on the activate button. I will not do it now because I only want to show you the uh, the paradigm. So in principle, he will see the fixation cross in the middle. Then an arrow is showing uh, up to the left or to the right, which indicates for him to start the motor imagery until the fixation cross in the middle of the screen is disappearing. When this is uh, exactly now, when it's disappearing, he can stop and focus for the next uh, next trial. On the top here, we can see number of trials that we already did. And uh, as I said, in this experiment, we use 40, but of course, would be possible to even do more merge data sets afterwards. But first of all, we want to have a look on our EG data. So I open the G scope here. And so we have our 16 channels. So if Slobodan, for example, is making eye blinks, we see that here. Or when he's like closing his eyes. We get some alpha activity. So as also my colleagues already showed you today, uh, always check if you really get some uh, good EEG signals, otherwise the experiment um, doesn't make sense probably. So our signal is, is good. I will stop the model shortly. Um, I will now move the um, the window on the second screen, but I, in the meanwhile, I will explain you then a, a bit uh, the device in more detail. Lobby is ready. So the device is doing a self-check again. I activate the FES also. So 
So in this case now, um, Slobby is in the training session. So we will uh, run these experiments to, to train uh, afterwards the classifier. He's now getting always the feedback from the uh, from the FES devices. Um, so even if he's not participating actually, he would get the, the feedback. Um, afterwards, when we have a classifier available, uh, we can switch in the model um, the mode so that the um, feedback is only given um, based on the EEG classification actually. Um, in the meanwhile, while we are doing this experiment, Shortly, I will explain you the device a bit more. So I will just switch my camera again. Um, so here we have our FES device. Uh, nowadays, they are also in a nice black color. Um, we have here in the front um, the red and black connector uh, where we connect the cables for the electrodes, actually. Um, then we have a uh, here one connect uh, one uh, LED for the stimulation when it's active. We have an LED when the uh, device is actually in an active mode. Um, you also have here a, uh, a battery level. Um, so if the battery is low, then it will also give you an indication. This device is not connected right now, so the, the LEDs are not on. Um, you have also an indication for a high impedance. So for example, if the uh, electrodes are not properly connected or um, if they are maybe old already or so, then the impedance can be high. Or if the current is getting too high, then uh, the system is giving you here a warning and it's not stimulating uh, because the impedance is too high. Um, and it's also an indication here when the current is higher than uh, 10 milliampere, for example. Um, here we can also connect uh, a hand or foot switch, but actually with the FES device, we are not using this feature that often. Um, tomorrow you will see a session with the uh, our cortical stimulator there. It's more common to use this functionality. Um, on the back of the device, we have on one side an on-off switch. Um, then we have a USB connection here. So the device is connected with a USB cable um, to the computer. We have digital input uh, uh, socket, but this is actually deactivated uh, in this case. And we have uh, digital output one and two. This allows you to, uh, for example, uh, also send out uh, trigger information to an external device or to the amplifier again, uh, if needed. Here, it's a little bit hard to see, but we have here the battery. Um, two batteries are necessary to run to run the device actually. So nine volt block batteries. Um, you can use rechargeable ones uh, actually also with the newer version um, or usually we recommend uh, lithium batteries for the purpose to do simply longer, longer recordings and longer uh, stimulation circles. So two batteries are, are needed here. And yeah, this is actually for the device. Um, for the stimulation electrodes, um, now I use the smaller ones for the uh, upper limb uh, experiment. They are fine for uh, lower limb movements. For example, we have also bigger electrodes because the muscles there are are bigger, and then we have uh, these bigger pads for the muscle stimulation of a leg movement, for example. Um, that would also uh, work here with this device. We have now 28 trials already done. In total, this takes um, yeah, uh, a bit because for each trial you have to, yeah, approximately you need it for each one around 10 seconds, uh, a little bit more because you always have this uh, onset uh, error is popping up and then you have this time to get uh, the motor imagery done. During this 
imagination, you should always focus on the same movement actually of, of uh, not switch to the movement that you think. It sounds easy to, to think uh, about a movement, but actually it's not that easy. So healthy people are usually doing the movement simply. We are not imagined it. So for some people that's quite an easy task, but for for others it can take a, a little bit of training to get really um, good accuracy levels. Oh, I can share my screen again. Oh, actually, I'm sharing the still. So in the model, of course, we also save the data here in the in the raw data uh, block here. And we are almost finished with the paradigm. So last trial. Okay, and as you see, the model finished now. Um, what we are doing now is we move back to um, to our MATLAB environment and we use our offline processing software called GBS Analyze to analyze the data that we recorded recently. So let's have a look. The, the last file here that we have. Um, so it's actually directly bringing always uh, an indication for the actual date. So you cannot overwrite uh, a file because it's adding the system time when you start the recording actually. Quite, quite convenient. And as you can see, we have our channels here. Um, the first channel is uh, always automatically added by Simulink. It's uh, the time channel, simply growing over time. Then we have our 16 EEG channels. And in the uh, last channel, we also have uh, here information of our trigger uh, ring. So you can see whenever uh, the task onset uh, is happening, so whenever we see, okay, the arrow is showing to the left or to the right. We get a trigger information here on the uh, on the last channel. Um, what I can run now is, uh, in principle, we could analyze step by step uh, this this recording. But uh, for our PCI experiments, we already have also scripts uh, ready to use that you can automatically run. So um, you can check there is uh, under options and uh, appearance settings you can have this uh, user uh, this user uh, selection and here you can actually check for the uh, the batch file we call it uh, or script so under HiSys there are several examples uh, we use here for example motor room imagery CSP patch um, so we select this folder where our file is located. And under the users menu, you can find then already the, uh, the classifier. So this experiment, for example, is available for three classes and also for two classes. So we have now two classes, left and right uh, uh, hand uh, imagination. So we use this batch file. Uh, it can actually also uh, use, for example, an automatic artifact detection that we can uh, use here. Now it's doing the calculation steps. It's generating a um, couple of uh, plots that you can also use then uh, for publications, for example. So we have on one side 
어. 안 어, over all outcome that we get here, so you can see, um, we have here uh, an error rate of around 12% approximately, so 88% um, accuracy, um, so we did it quite well job. Still, it's yeah, here already 8 p.m., um, but Slobby is not tired. He's usually used to late <laughs> late sessions. Um, so good classification result for him here. Um, of course, if the classification is not good here, then we will have to do maybe more training runs simply uh, to get uh, better results here. Um, here we also see how good we can uh, discriminate between left and right-hand side, for example. Um, also the Again, the total uh, error rate, but also for left and right hand uh, for each class. Um, also, so the right hand side, for example, the left hand side. Very often, one is a little bit more dominant, uh, where you have maybe better results. We have here our common spatial patterns uh, plots as well, where we see uh, activity. Uh, I will not go into detail, too much into detail now because there are uh, sessions upcoming in the next days where this is also uh, explained in more detail. So you will hear that anyway, again. Um, if we have uh, run our script, so you can see also here in the outcome, um, there was one uh, trial was removed because of artifacts. Maybe yeah, he was moving a bit or, or so, um, and then uh, this artifact was removed. Uh, and additionally, one uh, other one was also removed because we need to have same number for left and right uh, trials. So you can see this outcome here. Um, what was now calculated was uh, our classifier also. So we can go back to our model. And actually here we have the apply classifier block. Um, we double click that and then we can select uh, our generated classifier. So it's called classifier CSP two classes. Um, we see it's from, from now, 22nd of April. We select this one. And now we get a list of the several time points during the, the recording um, and the, the, the error rate. Um, so we see, okay, this was the point at uh, after seven seconds, we have this lowest value of uh, yeah, 13% uh, uh, error rate here. So this would be a little bit earlier in the in the experiment. So you always have a look when uh, in this window of four seconds of uh, multimetry we find the lowest um, the lowest error, the highest accuracy. So that's the point that we want to select for our classification afterwards. So we accept that. In the paradigm, we now also switch to feedback. And in this block for the activation, um, so first uh, uh, in the during the the training or the calibration, we was uh, we were using the, the practice mode. So as you can see, it's always stimulating in this uh, time. Now we use the uh, the rehabilitation mode, where uh, the devices are controlled through the EEG. So um, only when Slobodan is uh, Imagine, uh, is doing the imagination correctly uh, and also the classifier is detecting it, um, then he will get the feedback through the FES. Uh, otherwise, nothing will happen. But we will also see, uh, see that. So I will switch the share screen now to the second screen because there I want to show you the the window then. So 
So for him, the experiment is in principle now, the, or the task is the same. So he has to, to imagine the movement. The only difference now will be that, um, yeah, the stimulation will only appear when it's, it's correctly done and correctly detected by the PCI system. So now the stimulators are doing a self-test again. The paradigm is shown. I activate the, the FES actually. And now the, we see we get also a bar feedback. So this is the, the real-time feedback that we get from the classifier when he's imagining the, the right-hand side, for example. Now it's wrongly detected, was on the right, uh, uh, and it was a left-hand task. So no movement before. Now it's correct, and we are getting the, the feedback through the, the FES. I should switch my camera also. Let you see that really, sorry. Now left hand side again, we get feedback. You can see sometimes it's also a bit that on the beginning on the on the wrong side maybe, or then it's uh, when it's detecting then correctly, we get the, the stimulation. So now left arm is detected and is moving. But we saw he had a quite uh, Good accuracy, so yeah, uh, almost around 90%, or yeah, between 85 and 90%, which is quite quite good to have a, a good control. So every everything higher than 80, of course, is, is already good. Uh, otherwise, if you have low uh, low one, it's it's maybe a little bit frustrating if it's not stimulating then. Okay. So I, can, I think we can stop that now because you got the idea how this can be controlled. So this is uh, an example of how to um, yeah, uh, do an experiment uh, in Simulink, um, closed loop experiments uh, using the EEG for, uh, and giving feedback through the, uh, the FES devices. And of course you also have, have the, the feedback um visually over this uh, with this paradigm um another option that we that we can use for example is to stimulate uh not the muscle uh, as we did uh, now we can also stimulate um the brain directly using uh, uh transcranial magnetic stimulation therefore we remove the fes electrode actually yeah and a colleague of mine will also help for that. So um, we are not producing uh, the magnetic uh, stimulation devices actually, but there are companies developing that and there are several systems um, available. Um, I will shortly start uh, the, the model for you again. Uh, so that you see a bit about it, and then uh, we we have a look um, uh, for the recording. So we have here uh, this TMS uh, experiment. Um, it's always actually uh, asking you directly for a folder where you want to uh, store the recordings. Then we can also define here uh, a name and a subject ID. So that we find our our data set uh, afterwards again. And then our model is generated and prepared here. Um, so this model is actually also uh, um, providing some uh, analysis steps for, uh, for the TMS stimulation. So typically when you run an, an uh, experiment with TMS, you always uh, wants to have a look on the data directly after the stimulation. Um, and this is actually performed with the upper part of the model. So we can uh, generate here, um, for example, have a look on evoked potentials that are generated through the TMS stimulation. Um, you can activate different uh, 
filters and uh, for example here you can store the data you can activate a common average reference um, i will not focus on this part because there is another session uh, this week where we will see that uh, anyway i'm more focusing on the the lower part here um, which we use again for our uh, our stimulation um, and for the closed loop experiment so on one side again we have our uh, our device here so we select our e high amp um, in this case we use a higher sampling rate because uh, yeah, for TMS recordings we typically use here a, a higher sampling rate um, because we are very interested in the yeah, directly after the stimulation so that's why uh, with a uh, more detailed signal um, can have here uh, this and we choose 17 channels so before we had 16 we are using the same cap uh, one electrode is additionally in the back uh, of the head um, because for these experiments we are looking for uh, alpha activity for example um, but you can also use uh, and check for for other opportunities um, when you synchronize for example with an external uh, device here we can also en enable the trigger so whenever we get uh, a stimulation from the uh, the TMS device, for example, we get immediately the trigger information. Okay, now that the device is stimulating. I'm not selecting any filters right now because that can be done in the model. So here we have for the visualization, a uh, notch filter and the, uh, a band pass filter here for, the, for our vis uh, visualization only. Um, more important is our selection here um, for the for the triggering of the device actually. So we use here uh, we select channel 17 that's the one in the back of uh, of the head because there we usually observe higher alpha activity and then we are calculating the band power of the signal so we have a lower cutoff frequency of 8 hertz upper cutoff frequency of 12 hertz and we select here a window of 1200 samples for example at our sampling rate of 4800 and then we use uh, here our threshold uh, scope. So this allows you to um, yeah, change on the fly in principle the, uh, the threshold value. Uh, whenever um, yeah, this is reached, a trigger is generated automatically. And then we can send the trigger to our stimulation box. Um, this is actually This box that we have here, um, so it's called uh, G-STIM box. We have uh, outputs here. We have also inputs here on this side. Uh, with the outputs, you can trigger uh, external devices. The device is connected uh, with a USB uh, connection again to our computer. We can also use it here to connect other stimulation devices, for example, for uh, SSVP experiments. So a um, box that we uh, develop and that we can uh, interface also through, through uh, our Simulink interface. So here, uh, when I double click the, the Steam box, the only thing that we have to, to check that is that the uh, correct COM port is used. Um, and actually from here, we have a cable connected to our output one. The output one cable is then connected to our TMS device. I will uh, shortly afterwards show you with the video uh, a little bit about the, the device um, so let's have a look um, so Slobodan will sit on my place now because then we are closer to the TMS device and on the other side I have my colleague Ren here, who is our expert for TMS recordings. So let's have a look on our model when we started to see um, to see the threshold level.
takes a bit to get started because yeah, usually you will not run this experiment when you do a, a Zoom session also. And it's also starting a couple of plots actually. Okay. So we have here our threshold and we have here our, our scope. Maybe let's check channel 17, just a second. Uh, back. So channel 17 is uh, over the, the visual cortex. Yeah, so now it's getting better here. And here we also, oops. So when Slobby is, for example, relaxing, then we should get alpha activity. Oops. So now we can define uh, a threshold value. And we had here around 400 or what? Yeah. 20, we activate it. So as you can see, we have now this line and on our stimulation box, whenever it's uh, detected, we are already generating the trigger. And let's have a look. I'm trying to use the, the, the camera audio now, so that you can also hear actually when doing the stimulation. Stimulating and here. Now it was stimulating again. Stimulation again. You also see in the EEG data actually the, the stimulation artifacts. And now, it's, yeah, whenever the threshold is reached, um, the device can be triggered. The approximate delay you hear um, is around 20 milliseconds. Is the G stim box. Um, faster option would be to use maybe the, an external microcontroller. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, 
So, okay. Thank you, Ren, and also thank you, Slobby. So, we used here, uh, yeah, alpha activity because this is quite uh, uh, easy to 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 detect, of course. But, uh, also, other options uh, would be, of course, with here uh, using, for example, beta activity or uh, multiple channels. Um, several experiments can can be set up here. Um, we saw before we had the stimulation of the muscles. Here, it would be directly possible to actually stimulate the brain. Um, also, for example, for rehabilitation purpose, but also other uh, applications are possible here for the researchers. Okay, um, yeah, that's actually what I wanted to show you in this session today. Um, two experiments, how to set up um, yeah, closed loop. One where you, uh, you saw with the uh, imagination of the movement, um, to control the stimulation um, where we have to train classifier and so on so that we uh, then afterwards do a feedback run um, to get the, the stimulation actually and the other one where we you saw where there is no uh, training also necessary for the second one for example where we use the alpha activity you only have to detect the correct threshold um, and then the stimulation uh, can be generated. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex. There is a question from Manuel. Is there any protection for muscular overstimulation for the FES? Um, yeah, typically it would be like that the, if the, if the, the, uh, the current is too high, um, then it, it, it would be uh, yeah, stopping the stimulation. Um, a, a muscular overstimulation in principle here is not possible because the currents that we are using are, are really low uh, and people are always asked, it, asked to, to tell us, okay, if there is pain, for example, also, so it should not be, of course, painful to do it, these this experiments. So the stimulator is, of course, measuring the impedance um, between the electrodes and the skin. The, if the impedance is too high, this would produce burnings, for example. And then the stimulation current is limited. And also the device has a certain amount of stimulation current that we allow, depending on the pulse width. And with these uh, safety features, we avoid overstimulation. You could, of course, burn the skin or the muscles by injecting too much current, especially if the impedance is too high. The another question is from Nicolo. Can you deliver vestibular stimulation with your device? I actually don't know. I never tried that. You could also do that. So then you're just placing the, the electrode pads close to the ear. And then you can also stimulate that. Uh, Fatem is asking, can we use FES for long-term use or will it harm the skin? Um, so typically we use it in sessions for like, uh, yeah, uh, around uh, 40 minutes where people are doing a, a treatment, for example, with the, the FES where you have stimulation always, like we, we saw an experiment with lobby, uh, as Christoph mentioned, of, of course, if the, if the current is, is too high maybe you can uh, burn the skin but uh, for that reason we have the security uh, that it's not stimulating then in these cases um, so skin is usually not not uh, harmed you maybe see afterwards a little bit like where the pads uh, were placed but uh, it's actually not not hurting also um and with that, we are actually coming to the end of, oh, there, there's another one from Manil. Can we connect the muscular stimulator to the sensor model this as FNIRS? Um, we actually tried that once, yes. Um, there is, for example, an integration from our side available um, where we use uh, the uh, G-sensor FNIRS from our uh, side, uh, which is an eight-channel uh, FNIRS device. 
we can combine it here with EEG. Um, actually, when you do these experiments, it's the same setup. Uh, you additionally have uh, FNIRS uh, included, um, and then you can decide on the um, performance of the classifier, what you use. FNIRS is different, of course, here, because the um, you see typically when you do mode imagery, uh, you see the response after around 10 uh, seconds, um, not like with the uh, the uh, EEG where it's uh, directly, as we saw, we have this window it was only like three, four seconds long. Uh, with uh, FNIRS, it typically needs to be longer. Otherwise, we would not obtain uh, here uh, and see any any change in the in the signal. Then Fatemi is asking, have you seen any projects working on balance maintenance, like using fast electrons on hip, knees, and ankle? Maybe I can answer that in recoveries. We are using uh, the FAST stimulators for gaining better finding cross motoric skills, and we also get less spasticity. And then we figure also out that balance and gait gets much better in these patients because we are training the sensory motor cortex. And this has also a very nice effect on balance. So in this case, I guess the sensory information flows better back to the brain and this is why the balance is improving but there's also a lot of EEG work and FMI work done just on balance uh, like from EPFL in Zurich. 